Hey, sports fans, welcome back to the Foolish Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. I wanted to give you some foolish thoughts after Michigan's 68-67 to loss to Ohio State today. First off, if you didn't hear the game or uh, before it, uh, Isaiah Livers was out. He's out indefinitely with a stress fracture in his foot. There is no timetable for his return, so that forced Brandon Johns Jr. To, into the starting rotation. Also, Ohio State, I am sorry, I can't remember the name, but they had lost another a player of theirs, too. He was out with a concussion. He didn't play. So both teams were down stars. If you didn't watch this game, it was nothing like the 92-87 to victory for Michigan earlier in this regular season where both teams just played extremely good offense. Today was more of a defensive battle, especially the first half. Both teams played bad offense versus good defense, however you wanted to see it. It was 27-26 at halftime. The only thing keeping Michigan in the game was free throws. They went 9 for 10 on the free throw line in the first half. After half, though, Ohio State combined with Liddell and Washington, their two really good players, their two-headed monster, they combined and they got 42 points for the game. And Washington was 9 of 20 on the shot. I'm not sure exactly what Liddell, Liddell's numbers were. But I think he had 18 points for the game. And really, they just started to take over. And when Dickinson had to cover Liddell on the three-point line, because you needed Dickinson in for offense, then it really opened up lanes for Washington and other guards to attack and drive and get layups. Ohio State ballooned the lead to a, maybe it might have been up to 13 points with about six, five, six minutes left to go in the game. And you thought the game was over. And then... Ohio State's kind of been in this funk lately, if you've been watching their games, where they kind of just have just brain cramps towards the end and just let other teams in. And I wasn't sure if Michigan was going to be able to do it because Michigan was shooting so poorly, but it did happen. And Michigan got a couple turnovers. In fact, Ohio State had three straight turnovers in under two minutes, and Michigan chipped the lead all the way down to one point. And Ohio State turned the ball over, and Michigan had the ball with under 30 seconds to go, and... There you go. What kind of play do they run? They don't call a timeout. They had a timeout left. And their offensive play was terrible. Just frankly terrible. If that's the call Joan Howard called, I would be shocked. Honestly, it was just a horrible play. Uh, Mike Smith, who was 1-4, he finished 1-11, for 1-11 for 11 on the day, just did a switch, got picked up by the bigger Liddell, and just dribbled at the top of the key, the like straight away from the free throw line, and he did a fadeaway three pointer as time was running down. Missed. No one got the rebound. Ball game over. When why why are you doing this play? For one, call a timeout, get set. I don't care, whatever. But the last possession, you moved the ball all over. You did quick passes and got Chandi Brown for a wide open three, which he hit. That was the only shot Chandi Brown hit too. He was one for six. And I just don't understand that play call. If, if, if Mike Smith was on fire, if he would just hit a few free throws so he saw the ball go through the hoop or something, fine. But honestly, it should have gone to Eli Brooks, who had hit two threes towards the end of the game, and he had hit his free throws. And such. So it really should have gone to someone besides Smith. Honestly, if I'm totally honest, it should have been Brooks or Dickinson. Dickinson led the Wolverines with 21 points, 9 of 14 shooting. Uh, it was just a bad play because they switched. They had Washington on Dickinson. That's what they should have done. It was just a bad play. Just such a deflating end. But that's what sports is, right? <laughs> you win, you're happy, you lose, you're sad. Michigan, looking at it in the big picture, Brian, Brandon Johns Jr., 0 for 3. All his free points came at the free throw line. I think he finished with 6 points on 7 free throws, something like that. Franz Wagner had a terrible game, 2 of 10. He had his like first three-pointer, and I thought it might be a good game for him. No, 2 of 10. He fouled out with like five, six minutes to go in the game, something like that, where Michigan apparently didn't realize he only had four fouls. Michigan apparently thought he had three, and so he stayed in the game when he should have come out, and he fouled out. I thought maybe they were just trying to keep him in there, trying to help the offense. Uh, it, it's... It's kind of hard to think, what does this game really mean for Michigan? There's two different ways to think about it. One, Michigan hung with the number nine team in the country without Isaiah Livers when they were shooting terribly for the game. And they, were, they somehow were able to stay in the game relatively, thanks to Ohio State's late turnovers, don't get me wrong. 
I mean, it looked like it was going to be a blowout, and then Ohio State started doing Ohio State things where they're just turning the ball over at the end of the game. Or is this a precursor of problems to come? Without Isaiah Liveridge, you don't really have that stand-up three-pointer that can really spread the court. You only have... You, you still have wing players that can drive and attack, but they didn't do that very well. Eli Brooks, he was just settling for mainly jump shots, and Franz Wagner, like I said, he didn't do much anything offensively. He was good on defense relatively. He got some steals. So it's hard to think. Is this like... You know, you lost. Okay. It's not that big of a deal. I don't think anyone's beating Illinois. Illinois is on fire right now. They're clicking offense and defensively. I would be shocked if anyone, Iowa or Ohio State, beats Illinois today or tomorrow. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Illinois wins the Big Ten tournament. So, I don't know what this really means for Michigan. And What do I, you know, it's just hard to try to grasp because you're worried about the team in a way, Michigan was playing so well during the middle of the season, then the COVID pause, and, you know, they played all right after that. But what 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 team do you have going forward if you don't have Isaiah Livers? You see, when you take out a piece from the team, the rest of the players are struggling to find their groove. And when you have an advantage, you don't use it. They don't go to Dickinson enough. They don't take advantage of their advantages. And obviously, they were at one point, they were 3 of 15 on three-pointers. Just like, the guys were just missing open threes. It's like, ugh. So, what is it? Just a bad shooting game? Or is it more a deeper issue? I don't know. I mean, a loss is a loss. Michigan's out of the Big Ten tournament. Well, congrats to Ohio State for getting the win. The game looked like it was a tight game back and forth that really wasn't. Ohio State dominated the second half, and kudos to them for getting the win. Michigan gets to rest up and prepare see where they're heading tomorrow in the Big Ten Tournament. Sorry, the March Madness bracket comes out. Let me know your thoughts. Appreciate those. I'll try to respond as I can. Thank you to all the subscribers and my new subscribers. And until I see you guys next time, go blue!